U.S. war in Afghanistan. If it ain't fixed, break it harder. <music> President Trump's done yet another 180 on a thing he used to rail against, Rosie O'Donnell. I wish. The war in Afghanistan. He wants to scale up the longest conflict in American history, which the U.S. has been trying to win since 2001, when maybe some of you Newsbroke fans were just a twinkle in your parents' eyes, when your dad was trying to decide whether taking your mom to see Bridget Jones's diary or Donnie Darko would be more likely to get him laid. Turns out, she's really into demon rabbits. Trump has pledged more troops in Afghanistan despite the $700 billion we've already spent on the war, despite the Taliban continuing to grow, despite casualties increasing, and above all, despite his original instinct. I like following my instincts. Because Trump's original instinct was to slam Obama for the failed 30,000 troop surge. Let's get with it. Get out of Afghanistan. We should rebuild our country. Yeah, let's get with it. Hip yourself to the program. Groovy schools, far out airports, boogie down infrastructure. What am I saying? But now Trump is recommitted to America's most complicated war with some totally achievable goals. From now on, victory will have a clear definition. Attacking our enemies, obliterating ISIS, crushing Al-Qaeda. Teaching pigs how to fly, cracking the Facebook algorithm, curing baldness without sociopathic dissociative identity disorders. Who's talking? Mexico? Trump becoming hawkish on Afghanistan makes sense, though, because the only people left advising him are generals. You know that old phrase, when all you have are generals, everything looks like an untapped oil field. Trump trusts military men more than he trusts literally anyone. My doctor tell me to avoid fried food, but this orange chicken was prepared by General So himself. So I'm gonna go for it. And those generals lobbied Trump hard on the idea that the battle against the Taliban in Afghanistan can be won. And to convince him, they pulled the brilliant move of showing him a snapshot from 1972 of Afghan women wearing mini skirts. Which begs the question, is that the key? Just show Trump things in miniskirts to make him change his mind? Planet Earth does have some nice cams. We gotta stop deforestation. I love a little forest on my planets. Trump and the generals want their shot, even when anyone with any real grasp on the situation knows that the war is a lost cause. Even this Fox-approved former lieutenant says upping troops won't guarantee a win. How on earth can we expect 13,000 troops to do what 140,000 U.S. and allied troops couldn't do at the peak of our commitment when the Taliban was much weaker? You've got to know when to stop investing in the losing stock. Okay, Lieutenant, uh, but I think it's safe to assume Trump's not learning lessons about investing in losing stock after he bankrupted a f***ing casino. Think of Afghanistan like the show The Walking Dead. At first, it made some sense. It felt like there were clear bad guys and good guys. And then it dragged on, season after season, with the same damn storyline every episode, so you stop watching. And then one day you're flipping channels and see it on TV and you're like, they still haven't wrapped this up? Why am I still paying for this? So why did Trump change his mind on the war? Was it the macho generals with a picture of hot Afghan babes? Or is there something else? The New York Times reports President Trump is being pressured by a billionaire financier and a chemical executive to escalate the U.S. war in Afghanistan in a bid to exploit Afghanistan's mineral wealth. Afghanistan has a number of natural resources. One of the things that they do have, and I think the quote was, it was the Saudi Arabia of lithium. Now, everybody that's got an iPhone or uh, an iPad, lithium is part of that, that battery component. Okay, so Afghanistan is the Saudi Arabia of lithium, but Afghanistan is also the Afghanistan of the Afghan people. People, something you wouldn't forget unless you have sociopathic dissociative identity disorder. Mexico? Yeah. According to the New York Times, Trump and a military contractor buddy are pitching the Afghan government on mining what could be worth $1 trillion of minerals, or almost one two decades long war in Afghanistan. So doing the math on years it would take to mine, plus mining costs, plus military costs, in another 16 years, we'll have enough money for an iPhone 12. But loot another country's natural resources for the gain of private military contractors? We've seen that before, in Iraq and in Avatar. Great film. So was Trump right before to want to leave Afghanistan? And when do you call it quits? After so much failure and embarrassment, when do you just leave? 
It was too hard, too complicated. So pack your bags, spend a few days taking down all your self-portraits and that little photo of your wife. Move back to New York where you can shoot YouTube videos in your old comfy office like you used to. Maybe Breitbart will pick it up because your current reality show sucks. We're not talking about Afghanistan anymore, are we? Planet Earth does have some nice gam gams. Gam gams are not a thing. News Broke just celebrated one year of existence, and thank you everyone who has watched us grow from a small channel to what we are today, which is just massive. We couldn't have done it without all of you, and so to reward you, we have a special announcement coming up the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned, and we'll see you next Friday. Oh, and subscribe. Did I say subscribe? Please subscribe.